Hey guys, it's Mac Kids in one today with our fourth and final C lesson. So in this C lesson, we're going to be making a game-ish program. And basically what it is, is you have to guess a number between 1 and 1,000. And when you guess it wrong, it tells you whether the number you guessed is too high or too low. So what are the new things that this program does? The first one is a random number generator. That's pretty cool in my opinion. The random number generator. It's how you generate pretty much anything randomly. You get a number and then you use if statements. So this is more using the random number generator. Okay, then the second thing that's new with this, that's even more important, is that I use for loops in this application. So a loop is a piece of code that runs a certain amount of times, and you can use some logic with that, like make it run if a statement is true, like if something happens, then don't do this again, stuff like that. So, um, I'm going to run the program, the high-low is what I like to call it, and then we'll type in the code. Now in the code, I will warn you, there are four warnings normally, but ignore them because they really don't cause any trouble whatsoever. So I'm opening up the application. So it says, I'm thinking of a number between 1 and 1,000. What is it, you might ask? Guess it and win. So I'll take my first guess. My guess will be 500, too low. So then I'll guess 750, too low. 850 too low, 950 too high. Okay, so obviously it's taking me a little while, so I'll type cheat. So cheat is my cheat code, so the answer is 912. So it, it says 912 is the number guessed in 10 attempts. So the source code fills up about three quarters of a page. It's not that hard. So first of all, I'll open up Xcode. Create a new project, command line utility, standard tool, call it high low. So now in main.c, right here at the beginning after include studio.h, we're going to do include string.h and another include math.h. I'm not actually sure if we have to include the math.h, but it's cool to include anyway. So right here where it says hello world, we'll just say guess the number okay so now we're going to um, generate a random number so first um, let me explain random number generators you seed them which gives them a value to base their random number off of and so we're going to be seeding it with the time the exact amount of seconds since 1970 January 1st, midnight. So, um, the way to get the time and to seed a random number generator, you do S random, left parenthesis, then the number you're going to seed it with. I'll do time, left parenthesis again, null in all caps, right parenthesis, another right percent parenthesis, semicolon. Next, we're going to actually get the random number. So, I'm going to make a new integer, int rand, and then I'll do equals random, left parenthesis, right parenthesis, space, percent, space, 1000. And then I'll do rand equals rand plus one. Okay, so now we'll have a random number that's between one and 1000. So let me explain what this percent thing is. Percent means make this a number, a value between one and 1000. So it takes it and it shrinks it down to a smaller number. But that will actually not make it between 1 and 1,000. It'll make it zero, between 0 and 999. So that's why we're adding 1 to it. So now, right under this, we're going to make two integers. Int guess and int guesses. So now I'm going to make guesses equal 0. Okay, so now this is where we're going to do that loop that keeps on looping over and asking us to enter a new number. So I'll say 4 because it's that's the type of loop, a for loop. Space, left parenthesis, guess equals minus 1 guess bang equals rand that means doesn't equals exclamation point equals means it doesn't equal guess is plus plus right parenthesis so the first thing before the semicolon here runs the first time it gets to this line this loop the second thing checks if it's true and if it is true then it does it or if it is true then it stops so it does it while guess doesn't equal random. So it'll keep on doing it as long as this statement is true. After the second 
semicolon, the third statement in here, something that happens every time. So we're adding one to the integer guesses. So this is also cool. The fancy way to add one to an integer is you do the integer name plus plus. It's very strange syntactically, but it works. So now I'll do space, right curly brace, or open curly brace, and then on the next line do close curly brace. So everything between these curly braces will keep on happening as long as this statement is true. So as long as guest doesn't equal rand. So rand will equal a number from zero or from one to one thousand, and guess will always equal minus one because that's what we're setting it here. So it'll never get out of here. So we're going to assign whatever they type into the um, console into guess. So we're going to say printf make a guess. Okay, so now I'm going to make a care, a character array input, and I'll make it 20. So now I'll do an f get s input. 20 standard input. And so now I'll do an if statement. If and here's where the magic goes. I'm checking if it whatever they typed in equals cheat. And since I'm not checking if the last letter of input is a new line, I'm just going to include the new line in that if statement. So I'll do stir comp input cheat backslash n equals equals zero. That means that they did try to cheat. We're going to print them the number. So print f a number is and now right here, I'll say rand. So I'm giving them the value of rand if they do this. And then I'll say guess is minus minus. So that way it doesn't look like they've made a guess right now, even though they haven't. They've cheated. So now that I've gotten that cheaty thing out of the way, I'm actually going to check and try to convert what they typed in into an integer. So I'll do if exclamation point, which means if the following statement is not true or doesn't work. Guess it was a to i. And I'll do else if guess. And here's the magic here. We can say if guess and then a greater than sign, which is shift period, brand. That means that it's too high, so I'll print that too high. I'll say else, print f two. Okay. So that's that. So this is how I check if it's too high or too low. And I'll actually do something. Right here we're doing an else. If you do else space if, it's starting a whole new if statement. So I do else space if guess less than rand. Because if guess is equal to rand, it won't run either of these because it's it's not greater than and it's not less than. So we want that. If I just did else, then if it wasn't greater than, which means it equals or it's less than, then it would say too low. So we're not going to do anything if they're equal. So that's where the magic comes in. Outside of the for loop, we're going to say printf u1. So, let me explain. Let me explain well. Right here is a for loop. It'll keep on running this code again and again and again until guess is equal to ram. So, um, we're getting guess from the console. So if guess is going to equal whatever they typed in, then it won't print anything out. It'll be done with this loop, and it'll move on to the next code that says you won. And then the program will just be over. So it'll keep on saying too high, too low in this loop as long as it goes on until it's done. And I'll say you won. This is probably very confusing to you, so you're probably going to want help. And I'm willing to help you if you have any questions. So building up. Click GDB. The bug console. Okay, so I'll make a guess. 500. 2i. Cheat. 337. So I'll do 338. Sorry, it's 377, so I'll do 378. 
377. Okay, so that was cool. This is our app. Like I said, four errors. Um, but it worked the first time we built it. Unlike I know in some other tutorials, it hasn't just worked. So this is how to make a high-low game. This is, in fact, our last C lesson. And if you don't understand this, these are important concepts to know. So if you don't understand, please contact me and please ask me your question. Because I am more than happy to answer your question. Okay, so thanks for watching, Mac Kids in the One. Make a high-low app and try to understand how it works. And because this is our last C lesson, I'm moving on to something else right after this. So thanks for watching. Subscribe and goodbye.